Hey, what's up? Pete's Loving Nerd here. If you've been on Linux YouTube for any time in the last three months, you've probably seen several videos on Gardita Linux. So, is it worth the hype, or is it just another Ubuntu with a theme distro? Well, technically it'd be Arch with a theme, but you get the point. Well, I installed it, and I have some opinions about it. Let's go! I haven't done a distro review in a while, but I'm going to start doing them again for distros that look really interesting and bring something new to the table, and that starts with Gardita Linux, also known as Gardita Breakfast Linux. Get it? It's, it sounds like a Taco Bell item? Ahaha. Uh -huh. I went with the GNOME version because I am a huge fan of the GNOME desktop. However, they also have versions for several other desktop environments in case you're not a GNOME fan. Let's start with the initial setup. You know those Linux news sites that make an article that's something along the lines of 20 things to do after installing the blank distro here? Well, the Gardita setup tool does all of that stuff for you. You won't need a get started article because the setup program helps you set up faster mirrorless so you can download your packages faster, it updates your system, and it has an upgrade to ultimate feature, which I think is a weird name for that feature. It should just ask you if you want to install additional applications because that's what that feature does, but instead they worded it like it's upgrading from Windows 7 Home to Windows 7 Ultimate. I do not like its wording. Other than its wording though, I like this feature because I can easily set up my computer with what I want fast, as it allows me to check what applications I want it to install. Some of the defaults are a bit weird with the setup tools ultimate feature, but other than that I like this feature. Next up we have Gardita Assistant, which is not to be confused with Google Assistant. This is a tool for managing your system. This has things such as being able to easily update your system and your mirror lists, as well as removing the database lock in case you kill Pac-Man in the middle of an update or something, as well as you can see what system components are running and change some backend distro things such as the shell for the terminal like bash and performance tweaks. Nifty tool, but I think most of these can be done from the terminal if you are neckbearded enough. Still very useful for not memorizing terminal commands that you might need though. We also have the settings manager, which is a fork of the Manjaro one, and it lets you do things like set up languages, install drivers, select a kernel. Pretty simple tool, but nice to have. Gardita Gamer is a tool that lets you quickly set up common gaming tools. For example, you can quickly set up Steam for you know, Steam games, as well as itch.io for indie games, Pegasus and Emulation Station for retro games, Play on Linux for your Windows games through Wine, Mini Galaxy for God Galaxy, and Legendary and Heroic Launchers for Epic Games games. You can also install compatibility layers such as Wine and Boxtron easily through this, as well as some other tools that you might want to use for gaming. Really the only thing it's missing is the ability to download Mountain Dew and Doritos, you know, the two true gamer foods. Next up is Gordita Network Assistant, a network tool that I'm not neckbearded enough to understand. There's also Gordita Boot for customizing Grub, which is your bootloader, and there's also some third-party tools pre-installed such as Bleachbit for cleaning out your system's files to clear out some space, Timeshift for backups, and Pamac for the software center. Now let's talk about Fire Dragon. This is their fork of LibreOffice, the fork of Firefox, and is the default browser in this distro. This has some nifty features such as better desktop integration with KDE, which doesn't matter for me because I'm using the GNOME version, Wayland compatibility, which is nice because I'm pretty sure Firefox runs under X Wayland if you're running it on Wayland, some extra search engines, and it is built off of Firefox Nightly instead of Stable, which means it gets new features faster. Pretty cool. Now one thing I love about this distro is the fact that it's shipping new technologies that are ready, but not anything that isn't ready. For example, Wayland isn't shipped yet, and while I do prefer Wayland on AMD and Intel systems, if you're gaming or you just have an NVIDIA graphics card, Xorg is going to be a much better option than Wayland is. However, it does ship some other new technologies that are ready, but not shipped in many distros still for one reason or another, mainly because distros just haven't bothered to implement them. For example, Gordita ships Fish as the default shell out of the box instead of Bash. Personally, I would have gone with ZSH, 
even though it's a little bit less customizable and has less features, it's faster and it's more compatible with Bash syntax. However, the point is Bash itself needs to be phased out. It was written in like the 90s and there's better replacements for it now. And Gordita is helping that push forward. While Fish is a little bit slower than Bash, it has many, many, many more features, including themes and plugins. And some of its features really makes the terminal easier and more fun to use. But that isn't the only better technology that Gardita includes. It also ships Pipewire instead of Pulse Audio and ButterFS instead of EXT4. On top of that, Gardita has a bunch of performance enhancements, including the Linux Zen kernel, which has some performance enhancements over the regular kernel, and some other performance enhancements that I don't really understand that much, but they are there. Awesome. Now one thing I see a lot of the press headlines focusing on is the theming. I've been seeing a lot of articles that are like, look at this beautiful distro. But personally, I think that this distro has much more than just a theme on it. And I think the theming itself is a mixed bag. Keep in mind that my favorite GTK theme right now is... Do I have to admit this? It's Edweta, although I prefer Qgar or Papyrus for an icon set. Back on topic, I really like the GTK theming for Windows, and I love that they spent time to set up Cavantum and get the QT theme to match the GTK theme too, which makes KDE apps feel a lot more home on GNOME. However, that's where my compliments for the theming ends because the default shell theme is broken on GNOME 40 right now, which I get GNOME 40 is still very new, but at least disable the shell theme on new ISOs until it gets updated to be fixed. I'm also not the biggest fan of the icon theme. My issue with the icon theme is that all of the colors for the apps are changed with some neon gradient outline, and I mainly identify app icons by colors, and when those colors are just replaced by outlines of gradients, it takes me a little bit longer to identify what app matches an icon to. And some of the icons are straight up changed, like this is the GIMP icon. So I'll be keeping its CDK theme, but I will be changing the icon theme and using the default shell theme in GNOME until the shell theme is updated to be fixed. So, overall, is this distro overhyped? I actually don't think it is. On first glance, it just looks like a pretty arch distro with a theme, but it has several utilities to make life easier, especially for gamers, and it has insane performance benefits over other distros. I wouldn't recommend this distro to beginners, mainly because it's arch-based, and Gardita Assistant gives you access to tools only a true neckbeard Linux user would understand. However, if you're an experienced Linux user and you want to save some time setting up wine and everything for your games, as well as just if you're a gamer in general, and you want some performance benefits as a bonus, this might be a great distro for this. And I also like the way it progresses new technology while making sure that nothing is broken because of it. Overall, pretty solid distro. Anyways, that's the video. Thanks to my patrons who contribute $5 or more, including Mitchell Valentino, Sam Covet, Frank, Jim Peter, Mario Scripsguard, and Pete Nostre. The support really helps, and it will let me get more hardware for this channel. That's the video.